Hello and welcome to Talk Spooky to Me, the Ghost Story Guys Mail Show. I'm Brennan Store. I'm Paul Bestall. And this is our opportunity to hear from you, our audience. Paul, my friend, how are you doing there? It, it is strangely bright for 9 p.m. It is glorious, glorious as the uh, UK basks in a heat wave and I have to put up with people whinging about it as I turn <laughs> a, a darker shade of brown. I was going to say, your Mediterranean blood is, is perfectly suited for this, but everyone else in England, they are not accustomed to direct sunlight. It, it would seem not. No, I, I seem to live in a, a land of vampires. Um, and uh, I always find it amusing, the amount of men who clearly own one pair of shorts and a vest. All right, let's not judge people who own exactly one <laughs> pair of shorts. Actually, just I just took all my shorts to the charity shop. All I have now are gym shorts. I, Bren does not do shorts. <laughs> Not happening. <laughs> Mind you, Julie did say to me yesterday she wanted to know why I was dressed like a sailor in a striped tie. <laughs> so I can't, can't help my sartorial elegance. I'm sorry about that. That's it. Some it's people have the it. magic, some people don't. Paul has the magic. <laughs> uh, for my part, I, I was actually just reminded of a terrible moment in my life. I'm going to share that with everyone here. So oh. I was at my new gym is, is in the mall here. And so I was going to the gym this morning and the, uh, arcade quasars where I, I used to hang out uh, before Montreal, they've got a pop-up thing happening in the mall. So they've got a bunch of old arcade machines there. They've got, you know, the Ninja Turtles, uh, in cool. there, they've got Captain America, <laughs> um, bunch of old, cool old stuff. Yeah. And one of the machines is Dr. Mario. <laughs> and now I, I don't know if you remember Dr. Mario, but it was basically like Tetris, but not Kami, basically <laughs> Mario standing motionless to the left of the screen, tossing pills into a bottle, which again, horrifying that kids are fucking playing this when you really think about it. I can't imagine why we have a problem with overprescription. Um, <laughs> but the pills would be multicolored and you had to line up the colors mm. to then, you know, then they would form a line and they'd disappear. And so, yeah, it was like Tetris, but with pills, which again, yeah. I'm, as I hear it, I'm like, oof, yikes. <laughs> But when I was a, a wee lad, the, <laughs> the one interesting thing that happened in Revelstoke was we had a video game tournament at the local movie theater. And I was, I made it to the final round of this contest. Yeah. And my opponent was, was a young girl. And I remember the, the final game, they didn't tell us what it was going to be. And it was, it's a brand new game and it was Dr. Mario. And she fucking crushed me at Dr. <laughs> Mario. And so today, looking at that, that machine, I, it all just came flooding. I'd forgotten all about this. It just came flooding back. And so I don't know who you are, lady, but if you're out there and you remember beating a chubby young man at Dr. Mario sometime in the late 1980s, I challenge you again. I will destroy you. <laughs> Our courteous and efficient staff is on call 24 hours a day to serve all your supernatural elimination needs. We're ready to believe you. So... Why don't you get us, get us started here, my friend? Okie dokie. So our first one is from Michael, who says, Hi, just started listening to you guys. I have been binging your podcast for when I'm at work driving. I have a place for you to check out. They say it's haunted, so I will let you decide for yourself. And obviously this is the notorious Edgefield site, which is owned by the infamous McMenamin brothers, I believe. Uh, yeah, it is owned by McMinimans. You're familiar with the Edgefield? I am familiar with the Edgefield, yes. <laughs> no shit. Well, I, I mean, I don't know why I'm surprised. <laughs> Ghostly kids and offensive ghosts. That's what you get at Edgefield. Okay. That's very cool, Michael. I, I didn't know that. I'm familiar with McMinimans because I've, I've, I used to have some friends in Portland, so I'd go down there every now and again to hang out, and they, we loved going to the Kennedy School. Which mm. is, which is just a completely, it's, it's an old elementary school renovated into a series of bars. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I'm pretty sure that place is haunted. I don't know if there are, if there are stories about it, but even back then when I wasn't as aware of this stuff, Kennedy just felt something. Mm. Mm. Well, they've, they've, um, they've built a reputation as renovating a lot of dilapidated sites in, in and around Portland. As far as I'm aware, they're a big sort of real ale connoisseurs and they've built breweries and, and done a lot of places up. So uh, I've been aware of the Edgefield for, for quite a while because it was on a documentary I saw a few years ago talking about the 10 most haunted hotels in USA. Oh, no shit. 
There's another haunted hotel in Portland, uh, the Heathman. Yeah. If I, I think that's a name. And that's apparently famously haunted. It, apparently it extends basically in a line up one particular part of the hotel. So there's like one, I can't remember what the, num- what the room number is, but all the way mm-hmm. down, I guess, is particularly vibey. But I guess there's one floor that's more haunted than the others. And I, I recall, again, I was there in 2012 and just I was starting to write Strange and mm. I felt it. I was, I was just kind of becoming on, getting online to this stuff and I could really feel it. And it was funny because I thought when I went up to the floor to check it out, I thought it was a different room. So I started walking towards the room I thought it was and I'm like, well, I don't really feel anything. But then I started moving towards the room that I later found out it actually was. And I thought, well, this feels like shit. So I, man, I, these guys are wrong. Uh, no, I was wrong. I had the wrong room. <laughs> but yeah, no, there, there's a lot of great, I, again, I haven't been to Portland since, uh, I think the last time I went to Portland was 2014 for the Lovecraft Festival when I got really sick. Mm. But um, there's a great beer scene down there. Mm. Yes. O- Oregon's obviously on my bucket list for, for beer and Bigfoot. Absolutely. The two Bs. <laughs> the third one is Brennan. <laughs> Very different from the three B's in Bad Santa. <laughs> don't look that up, folks. No, don't. Next up is Donna. Donna says, I'm in the midst of composing a longer email about paranormal stuff, but just listened to the latest talk spooky and had to chime in. Paul is absolutely right about George Lucas having too much power after Star Wars, and these three little words can prove it. Howard the Duck. <laughs> I got to say, Donna, I never saw it, but oh. everything I've heard suggests <laughs> you are correct. Yeah, Paul Paul is wincing. Yeah, I've seen it twice. Once when I was a kid and I thought it was dreadful and once recently just to make sure that I was right and it was worse the second time around. I mean, I never liked Howard the Duck as a character anyway. I know he pops up occasionally as an Easter egg in Guardians of the Galaxy and stuff, but um, I've always found it a very silly character, um, like Spider-Ham. Just one of those that you just think, no, leave it alone. Um, but, you know, it's a, it's a film with a sex scene in it with the duke and a woman, you know? Because Leah Thompson's in that. He doesn't yeah. have sex with Leah Thompson. Oh, that poor woman. She's, yeah. She is, again, like um, like what's Karen Allen, just another yes. extraordinarily talented uh, screen, like actor with an incredible screen presence mm. who just ended up playing second banana to a lot of weird shit. Yeah, yeah. Our next message is from Lee, and Lee says, I see your clown juice and I raise you. Funky fluid. Guys, funky fluid, Poland's finest. I didn't try it. Much love to you, lads. Well, Lee, I'm disappointed. (laughs) And Lee has included a photo of (laughs) funky fluid, which is, it is a a beer. I'm going to Google it right now. Uh, oh boy, am I going to regret Googling funky fluid, Paul? <laughs> yeah, that's that's not something you should search for at work. Well, uh, thankfully I'm at home, so I, I can only fire yes. myself. And my <laughs> FBI guy already knows what a degenerate I am, so. <laughs> it's funny, actually, I, I was, when I was at the gym, I was talking to a, I was sending text messages to a friend of mine who just applied for a job. And they really want to get this job, and the, they were told that uh, we only have one other applicant. So they said, the, per- the interviewer said, we're going to talk to this guy and then we'll, we'll get back to you. So I said to my friend, I, I, I'm joking. Of course I'm joking. Well, we just got to kill that guy. <laughs> because I was working out, I was moving around, I was voice texting. So I was just, you know, like dictating basically. And so I'm dictating, that's fine, comma. We'll break into the office. His address will be on his resume, comma. Then we just break into his house and kill him. And I realized I'm saying this out loud and people are looking. <laughs> yes, I'm very disappointed with Lee. I, you know, you've got to go, if you see something weird in a, in a beverage shop, you've got to take it home and try it. And if you don't like it, you can give it to somebody for Christmas. I, I know when I go to LA, I, I like going to BevMo because they have a bunch yeah. of weird ass sodas in there. And I'll just, anything short, like the only one I haven't tried because I can't do peanuts is there's a peanut butter jelly soda. But all the yeah. other weird shit in there, I'll just go in and get a, you know, $50 armful. There's a reason I'm always broke. And, and just uh, go drink all this crazy ass soda. The, the clear winner so far has been I'm All Out of Bubblegum, which <laughs> is, uh, is uh, inspired, of course, by, by Roddy Piper. He sort of, uh, actually, they worked at the company, whoever made it, I think it's Rocket Fizz. They mm-hmm. worked with Roddy before he died to yeah. nail down like his chosen bubblegum flavor. 
and it's ah. it's it's I love it. It's very sweet, but it's very good. Yeah. I shall keep my eye out for funky fluid because we've got a few Polish delicatessens here. We've got a large Polish population in Sheffield. Post it if you find it and report yes. back. If not, I shall ask the regulars at the Polish bar, the Jabberwocky, if they've ever heard of it. You have a video game museum and a fucking Polish bar. Like, do you live on Tatooine? This is insane. <laughs> hey, it's all happening here. Apparently so. <laughs> Lucky bastard. <laughs> all right, so this one's from Fraser. Fraser says, firstly, I love your podcast. Thank you. You guys have kept me entertained through many a night shift. Even though working in retail, there was a few times I was listening to the stories and got spooked by a few mannequins or clothes hanging on a rack. You guys are legends, so thank you for everything you do. Ah, thank you, Fraser. None of my stories are that unnerving slash scary per se. Whenever things happened, we didn't usually feel scared. It was always a feeling like it was a relative coming to visit. We always said our house wasn't haunted, but was visited instead. The first story is about my older sister. She's had the most experiences. When our great Nana died, I didn't meet her sadly, my sister was three years old. They were very close. She died through the night, and my mom had to tell my sister when she woke up in the morning. When she did so, my sister said, I already know, Mom. When my mom asked how, my sister said, She came to see me last night to say goodbye, and that she loved me, then she flew away into the sky. Another one was about me. When I was four or five years old, I was playing with my toy garage. My dad was playing with me. He recalls me looking up to him randomly, but like, just above his head. I looked annoyed. He asked me what was wrong, and I said, Get off him, that's my daddy. What a little brat. <laughs> and he asked me who I was talking to, and I said the woman in a white dress sat on top of your head. He remembers it too clearly, and he feels like it may have been his guardian angel or something. Who knows? <laughs> Another one involving me was when I was even younger, like 18 months old. It was Christmas Day, and I was in my high chair demolishing my Yorkshire puddings. My mom had a photo of my great-granddad, the husband of the woman who said bye to my sister when she died, on top of the mantel. She said, Merry Christmas, Granddad. And I said, clear as day, Merry Christmas, Pumpkin. This was my great-granddad's nickname for my mom. Again, I hadn't met him either. He died a year before my great-nana did. My mom was horrified. She said I was slow to start talking. I walked from six months, but talking was a bit hard for me. Mom said I used to speak gibberish. I had started talking a little bit by that age, but not loads, which made it even more amazing that I came up with that. Yeah, that's, that's really crazy, Fraser. My last story is about my sister again. One time she was upset because mum grounded her. She was always grounded and I was an angel. <laughs> <laughs> my sister listens to the show. Sarah, does that sound familiar? <laughs> yeah, my brother will be chuckling as well. <laughs> she was crying and heard someone walking up the stairs. Her bedroom was a converted loft slash attic room which had built-in stairs and a see-through wooden banister between her room and the stairs. She said she told them to go away, thinking it was my mom or dad her stepdad. As she continued to hear the footsteps, she looked and saw the tops of someone's shoulders and the top of their head walking up the stairs. She only had her lamp on, so she couldn't see too clearly. Then she waited for whoever it was to come up to the top of the stairs, but no one did. She went over to turn the main light on, and no one was there. Again, like I said, we have never felt scared or threatened in any way by these events. 99% of ghost stories are the same. I, for one, love and appreciate the paranormal. They're always there, it's just whether we're ready to see. Sadly, I haven't seen or had any experiences in a long time, other than the lucid dream of my dead granddad who I was very close to. Continue the great content, and I hope you enjoyed my stories. Fraser, we really, really did. Thank you so much for sharing those. This message is from Roz, and Roz says, Guys, love the stories, cryptids and the sort is something that's both interesting and frightening. You guys are helping me out a lot right now. Your stories and banter are helping to distract me from some very dark thoughts. You see, my pet cat of two years passed just yesterday. He was my world, and now everything seems dimmer. Your PSA really resonated with me, and I thank you for that and all the hard work. Love from SoCal. Ah, Russ, uh, we're so sorry to hear about your cat. That's yeah. incredibly hard. It is. You've just got to take some time as anything. Losing a pet is a terrible thing, and we've we've mentioned it on the show before. So. Uh, Take your time, and I hope we keep uh, putting a smile on your face as you move forward, and there will be a, a brighter dawn eventually, my love. Absolutely. Hang in there. Next up from Thomas. I thought I would reach out and say thanks, as weirdly, you two seem like close personal pals now. I started listening from episode one about 18 months ago, via a recommendation from Kev of We Need to Talk About Ghosts, 
and have just this minute caught up. Time to explore Patreon. I became more deeply interested in the world of the paranormal and folklore having moved to the Calder Valley, which is steeped in it, and discovering I had the time to investigate it during the 2020 lockdowns. I have no stories as such, but have seen two ghosts in my life. One as a solo cyclist in New Zealand in 2004. I was deep in the forested mountains of the South Island alone at a bike packers hostel, which is an unstaffed hostel with an honesty box for payment. Wow. New Zealand is different. <laughs> when the classic translucent gray lady appeared at the end of my bed in the middle of the night and terrified me. I packed my kit and left the moment sunlight flickered through the window. But interestingly, I have never found any reference to that bike packer hostel online ever since. I never thought that odd until listening to some of your episodes. Hmm. The other ghost is more interesting to me. As a 13-year-old lad, I saw a man walking up the road in the small hours. After watching him for 20 seconds or so, in a split second, he disappeared. Until that point, there was absolutely nothing to indicate he wasn't alive and present. I only watched him as I thought it was a weird time of night to be walking down the lane. It is that experience that has made me think, maybe we see more ghosts more regularly than we will ever know, but just do not realize. Aside from a will-o'-the-wisp trying to lead me off a cliff face whilst climbing Ben Nakalik on the aisle, I pronounced that first, first try, no help from Paul at all. <laughs> Your Gaelic's outstanding. Thank you. In Gaelic. <laughs> on the Isle of Skye in thick fog, those are my only known experiences, but I do wonder how many others I've seen but not known. Anyway, your podcast has meant a huge amount to me over the last 18 months. Thank you both for doing it. Many thanks, Tom. Hey, Tom, yes. thank you. Thomas living in the Calder Valley is uh, full of uh, the Fae, stories of the Fae, and uh, Black Dog Law, the Jai Trash, lives in the Calder Valley area. That's where all that comes from. There's ghosts galore, so I'm sure he'll have uh, plenty to go for. Apparently there's a very famous pub in Brighouse, I think, which is in the Calder Valley, called the Black Swan, which is an extremely haunted pub to this day, by all accounts. Oh, very cool. Next up is from Finch. Hello, boys. I just had to pause the Black Dog episode to write in because I had to correct the intimidable Paul Bestall and share a couple of fun stories. Okay, so Bungie had me howling like the Black Chuck itself because it's pronounced Bungie with a hard G. I went to house school there. And truly very little has changed since the hellhound swiped at the church doors. My fondest memories of Bungie are the road sign to the swimming pool. With fair frequency, the sign for Bungie swimming pool would have to be replaced following vandalisation. Letters would be scratched off, painted over and painted on to read Bungay swimming poo. <laughs> 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 it still makes me laugh because I am a child. You also brought up Blytheburg, more of my neck of the woods. I've got a couple more fun stories, but I have to crack on and get some housework done before the baby wakes up. You guys are rad. You've kept me company through an incredible year of change, moving to the UK, to Norway, having a baby, you know, the chill stuff. I'll try to write in with my other stories in the future. Take care of yourself. With love, Finch. Oh, Finch, that's, again, I, I guess I'm a child too, because I <laughs> laughed when I copied that into the script. And I, yeah, I laughed and edited out some laughing when Paul was reading it. <laughs> when I was growing up, the post office, there was a sign that said like public entrance and someone would always scratch out the L, the pubic entrance. It's a classic. Yep. Real highbrow humor in Revelstoke. <laughs> <laughs> From Cresta Lee, Cresta Lee says, loved the collab episode. Please encourage each other to do more with various other shows. Following more podcasts now. Hey, Greta Lee, I'm happy you enjoyed it. That's very cool. That's, uh, again, it was, it was fun for us. We were invited uh, by Chris from They're Not Shadows. And uh, yeah, it was, it was really cool. Emma writes, I love the podcast and the chemistry between you guys is wonderful to listen to. I work long hours by myself and it's awesome to have you two keeping me company. I will be at Paramete in September and I'm looking forward to what Paul has got planned. This is a big deal for me as I'm going by myself. Let's just say social situations aren't my thing normally, but I'm trying to do more things that I enjoy. I was wondering if any other listeners were going, and if so, would you please give out my Instagram so if anybody wants to meet up, they could message me, especially if they're going by themselves. Maybe we could be a group of loners together. <laughs> oh, bless. I would like to finish by saying how grateful I am for all the mental health talk. It's very reassuring that I'm not the only one out there that suffers. And the text number that you give out has been very helpful for me when going through a very dark time a few months ago. 
So Emma, that's really cool. Again, we just it, it means a lot to us that uh, that yeah that that that's been helpful for you, and that we're helping you get through some some dark times, or that we helped you get through some dark times. And good for you for forcing yourself out of your comfort zone. That's really fucking cool. Uh, as for Paramete, yeah, I mean, we'll see you there. We're going to have a table. Paul's going to be giving a presentation. I will probably be uh, at least a little drunk. So I will on Saturday night. Yes. Yeah. Once, once his presentation is over, you'll, you'll see me in the crowd with a big foam finger going, whoa, Paul. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, Emma's on Instagram as E-M-R-O-A-N-7-8. We hope to see you guys there. That is the, what, second and third of September? Did yep. we figure this out? Certainly is. Certainly is. Yeah. So if you're, if you're in the area, that's Paramede and Rugby. Come by, say hi. Uh, again, uh, we'll, we're still figuring all this shit out, um, but we'll probably have some pins to give away. Uh, some Ghost Guys pins, maybe other shit. Uh, I've not, I've not, we've never done a convention. I've never had the opportunity to do that. So it's all very new, but we're excited to be able to meet some of you guys in person. I'm very stoked to watch Paul give his presentation and cheer him on like it's a football match. <laughs> Throwing my underwear at him on stage, you know. <laughs> we'll see you there, Emma. Yes, looking forward to meeting you, Emma. All right, so we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Thank you for calling Generico's Pizza. You mind waiting on hold for 15 minutes while I flirt with the new waitress? What? No, I don't want to wait for 15 minutes. I just want to order a pizza. What if I promise to burn the pizza, deliver it cold, and stand awkwardly at your door until you tip me? I say no to all of this. Look, pal, maybe you're better off going with HelloFresh. What's HelloFresh? HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. You get farm fresh, pre-proportioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. They make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. Not only can you take your pick from 40 weekly recipes, but you can choose from over 100 items to round out your order, from snacks and easy lunches to desserts and pantry necessities. Everything arrives in one box on a delivery day you choose. This May, HelloFresh is celebrating Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Try limited time authentic recipes created in partnership with Chef Serbi Sani of New York City's Tagmo Restaurant and enjoy a cultural taste tour right in your own kitchen. I can tell you from personal experience that HelloFresh cuts down on food waste, saves me trips to the grocery store, and gives me time to cook with my wife. Didn't you say you were hitting on the new waitress? Hey, my life is very complicated. Right. How can I sign up for HelloFresh and end this conversation? Go to HelloFresh.com slash GhostStoryGuy16 and use code GhostStoryGuy16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh.com slash GhostStoryGuy16 and use code GhostStoryGuy16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. Done. Good stuff. Hey, this has been fun, but I gotta go. They're about to tow my Camaro. Somehow I knew it would be a Camaro. Pulling up to Mickey D's just for drinks? Oh yeah, that's me. Nothing extra, just perfection and a straw. Coming in hot for the coldest cups on the block. Because there are drinks. Then there are drinks from McDonald's. Get a creamy Oreo frappe or McCafe smoothie for less with 20% off any purchase of $10 or more. Only on the app. Limited time only at participating McDonald's. Valid one time per day. Visit McDonald's app for details. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Welcome to Vast National Bank. How can I help you? Hey, I'm here to talk to someone about a loan. Oh, I'll grab you the L97B. <laughs> we call it the just talking form. What about actually applying for a loan? Oh, my. Let me pop in a new toner cartridge. Hey, Bill. I want to pass me the big stapler? Yeah, I'm going to try a community bank. Skip the mega bank. When you need a loan, find a community bank at banklocally.org. From Athanasia, my dad and I used to watch the Indiana Jones trilogy over and over when I was a toddler. I've watched Raiders so many times that my Netflix recommendations aren't new films anymore. It's just relive your favorite moments with it recommending Raiders over and over. And when I watch it, I tend to talk, I tend to talk along with the dialogue. It's my number one comfort film. That's cool. Athanasia, that's, that's really cool. I, I love Raiders. It's Last Crusade is my favorite, but yeah, Raiders is a, is a masterpiece. Yeah, certainly is. Phenomenal. Oh, it always always makes me smile that because I had a friend whose dad was a projectionist at the local cinema as a kid growing up, and he gave me the cinema. I mean, if I'd you know, if you, 
hindsight is a wonderful thing. You wonder how much it would have been worth if I'd kept it. So I had the enormous, great big c- cinema poster for Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, too wall. cool. And it basically filled the wall. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that probably uh, would have fetched you a few bucks. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> Do you, what's what's your comfort movie? What's your? Uh, I'll put it on and just doesn't matter how many times you've seen it. Uh, the thing. <laughs> okay, sure. And Jaws. Oh, interesting. I think the thing about a comfort film because Raiders, you could say, well, you know, it's a guy murdering Nazis. Well, okay, no, that's that's pretty great. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's whatever makes you feel good and stable and shit. So no, I mean Jaws and and I mean the things. Okay, that's a little weird, but I get it. <laughs> I would really like not to spend the rest of this winter time to the fucking couch. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I always get concerned when I see those posts on Instagram or uh, or generally on social media where they go, name a film you, you've seen more than five times. And I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can easily say there are probably over 50 films I've seen over 100 times. Sure. I mean, I, I've seen John Wick four or five times and it just came out. Those are rookie numbers. You got to you yeah. gotta push those numbers up. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've probably seen Mr. Vampire over a hundred times. <laughs> and I didn't watch it for 15 years because I didn't have a working DVD for it. Have you had a chance to get into the uh, the sequels yet? I've only watched the second one and I was a bit tipsy and I didn't enjoy it because it had a child in it. Oh, just being annoying or you don't like the child in danger trope? No, it was a vampire child as well as vampires. Weird. Yes, that's what I thought. Interesting. Okay. I was I was too many drinks in though, so I don't think I was in the. Uh, I was appreciating it. <laughs> right. Well, that'll do it. <laughs> and when the sun's out, I don't watch television till about eleven o'clock at night. Anyway, because I'm usually sat outside trying to burn. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I I had to watch. Uh, we did the movie Influencer for Weird Together uh, yesterday. It'll be out next week. And I, I literally had to close my curtains in the middle of the day because if there's sunlight coming in, my brain just goes outside, outside, even though I hate being outside. <laughs> my, it's just, I've had it beaten into my head over the years. Like, no, it's, it's, it's nice outside. Go play. You know, like, what am I going to do out there? No, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to watch this fucking movie. But yeah, it, it's, it's very annoying. <laughs> like I, I just ordered, speaking of Polish things, uh, Vinegar <laughs> Syndrome, one of the yes. film distributors I like to buy from, they just uh, got this treasure trove of Polish films. Oh, right. Uh, like like classic Polish sci-fi and, and genre films. And one of them is the Saragossa Manuscript, which I have been hunting for for 10 or 15 years. Mm. And I had one shitty rip I found online, but there were no subtitles. So there was just no point. And mm. so I finally, I, they, they released it on Blu-ray. Or, pardon me, it wasn't Vinegar Syndrome. Who, that was, it was Yellow Veil Pictures. It didn't matter. No one cares. I'm the only one who cares. But I bought it from Vinegar Syndrome. And it just came. So now I'm trying to find some time to watch this three-hour 1970s Polish, black and white Polish historical epic. But again, it's, it's just like the sun's always out. It's my brain's always going outside, outside, outside. Like, no, you bastard. I want to sit in and watch this thing. I've waited 20 years for this. It, it's like when Criterion did uh, the five-hour cut of Vim Vinder's Until the End of the World. I adore Until the End of the World. I adore love that movie. When I found out that the five hour cut, they were do, finally doing the road show edit or like the road show showing of it. I was thrilled. I almost tried to make it work to fly down to New York to see it. Cause I didn't think I was going to be able to see it otherwise. And then when they released it on uh, Blu-ray, I lost my goddamn mind. But, and I actually, I had to like, like basically put on like horse blinders to force myself to watch all five hours of this fucking thing. So I didn't, so I wasn't looking outside because my brain would go, well, let's just pause it and go, what, stand in the garden? No, watch this movie. You've waited 10, you know, 20 years for this. <laughs> yes, I, know, I, feel, I feel that pain. All right, so we, we are on a timeline, folks. We're going we're gonna to keep going, because otherwise Paul and I are going to get, that's, that's a half hour di- digression about movies, because I could, I could just fucking talk about until the end <laughs> of the world for half an hour. I love that. Yes. Have you ever seen it, Paul? <laughs> uh, yes, but not for a long time. Next up is Taya who says, as a person of First Nations descent, I have huge issues with the Skinwalker explanation fad. You're not alone. It is not even a cryptid. These aren't just running around randomly, and they're certainly not hanging around waiting to chase some family in their car down a highway. I agree. Yep, couldn't agree more, Taya. It's a, it's a huge issue. Again, it's, that, that is a, a show unto itself. 
how the paranormal community will sometimes, not the community, but I, I blame TV, to be honest. But mm-hmm. it, the, these cultural things will get kind of sucked up into the mainstream and without any of the cultural context. And it just becomes, it's like the Wendigo. You and I talked about that on the episode. Mm-hmm. The, most people's conception of the Wendigo is nothing at all like what the lore of the Wendigo says. But yep. it's a cool visual, so it's, it, they, they go with it. Yep. Chupacabra. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, that too. Yeah. It's a blue dog. Doesn't look like a lizard alien. Get a grip. <laughs> All right. So I'm I'm currently being visited by Chewy, but uh, we will <laughs> we will continue regardless. So if you hear some purring, uh, that is that Me. is Chewy. Yeah, it's Paul. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we we, <laughs> we, we 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 you know we wanted to keep that from you, but now you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is our last message of the night. This is from Devin. And Devin is a patron, a longtime listener. Devin says, so this nugget in honor of the hopefully new NBA champs is either going to be helpful. What's that? They've won. Oh, did they? Yes. First time they've ever won it, I believe. The Nuggets. Oh, fabulous. There we go. Devin, you were, you were, these words are prophetic. Nostradamus, Devin. That's what we will call you now. If you end up in Ghost Forest, brother, it's just going to be Nostradamus. And yeah, it's a good (laughs) whole thing. Ghostradamus. Ghost. Oh, damn. That's good. Roast Radamus. <laughs> you guys suck. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Anyways, this is either going to be helpful or incredibly terrifying. I don't know enough to offer my opinion on if these sightings are interdimensional, but I do know what science tells us about our own eyes. Our eyes function by picking up radiated light that's reflecting off of the visible portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. The fact that so many of these things appear blacker than black indicates that they are drawing in the energy from the light around them. So in a scientific sense, if people are seeing these things, they aren't really seeing these things. They're seeing the absence of refracted light where those things are sucking it in. You know, like a black hole, which is terror part one. Terror part two says that our nervous system processes the information our eyes see in about 13 milliseconds. This could mean that these things are moving so fast, i.e. the jerky movements, that our eyes can't process the whole thing. I will tentatively add that our universe is so widespread and complex that I am by default skeptical of the interdimensional theory. There's so much here we don't understand that I don't need another whole ass dimension to make things spooky. But that begs the question, quite literally, what on earth is going around absorbing our light to fuel itself and spread general unease to the masses? Devin, dude, holy shit. That, that got me in a way a lot of that stuff usually doesn't anymore. Just like I, I love having new ways to think about these things, and that blew my goddamn mind. It's the arrogance of, of humanity that we consider ourselves to know everything about the universe around us based on our understanding of the, the laws of physics and gravity and whatever. And yet, we, we've absolutely no concept what could be happening on the other side of the universe at all. Um, and I think often, as we were saying about people sticking up with an explanation like skinwalkers are everywhere and all that. Interdimensional seems to be another favourite catch-all explanation. And I know I'm a big fan of Kiel and Valet and, and the like, but it does seem sometimes that people just try and say, oh, I've no idea what's going on. It's all connected. It's all some kind of cosmic trickster or they're all just interdimensional. Because once again, I think people are just afraid to say, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've definitely fallen into that. I'll say into the interdimensional. And do I really know what that means? No, I fucking don't. Of course I don't, Paul. I went to high school for Christ's sakes. I barely passed science. You know, I'm great at telling stories. I'm good at, you know, I'm good at like systems thinking, but I'm real lousy at science. And as you say, it's, it's, it's uh, just an explanation. It's a way to kind of put a label on something that fundamentally I think is unlabelable. Hmm. Absolutely. I think we should all be more concerned about the fact that, or CERN, I'm not sure if it has the capability, but I know they're trying to replicate a black hole there, aren't they? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And Stephen Good Hawking times. was always a big proponent of <laughs> trying to create them on Earth and going, oh, it's one of those things scientists go, oh, if we create a small one, it'll be fine. Yeah, that, that's how they all start. Yeah, that's it. That's like <laughs> being a little it. bit pregnant. <laughs> Just no. It's like having an ear on a mouse. Yes, you can do it, but why? Right? <laughs> no. Fix the environment. Fix the in- Stop putting my uh, ears on shit and fix the environment. Then Read we the can room. have fun and do weird shit. Yeah. Yeah. Make an army of cheddar goblins. 
That works. Yep. I, I propose a moratorium on hair transplants and boner pills until we solve this <laughs> environmental shit. That'll focus everyone. You're bald. Your dick doesn't work. Get to work. Once you're done, this will be your reward. <laughs> you can only have a hair transplant if it's like Bob Ross. Naturally. What What the hell else would you want to look like? <laughs> now that is man. Oh, man. Real man. I feel like there should be a theme song of some kind here. I don't have anything, <laughs> but this, I just... I don't know if I I'll, I'm going to dig through folks. If you hear music, it's because I dug through our uh, stock music provider and found something. <laughs> Bob Ross painting a scene. Bob Ross sex machine. <laughs> well, go. nothing I find is going to be as good as that. <laughs> folks, uh, if we have any, I know we have lots of uh, musicians in our audience. If you want to write <laughs> the song Bob Ross sex machine. I will play it on this show. I will even send you a t-shirt, a ghost story guys. T- I'll send you a goat story guys t-shirt. If you write the song Bob Ross sex machine, which incorporates the lyrics Paul just sang for us. Yes. And also a harpsichord. I mean, if you throw that in there, great. That is not a requirement to get the t-shirt. Um, you make me a rocking song called Bob Ross sex machine featuring those lyrics. You get a goat story guys t-shirt and I will play it on the show. You bet your sweet ass. I will play it on the show. I will play it on every show. I will jump out of the bushes playing it on a boombox. I will stand outside John Cusack's bedroom playing it. All right, guys, we got to get going. We have Ghost Story Guys live in five minutes, which you can be part of if you sign up at patreon.com slash ghost story guys. Patrons at the $10 level and above get the monthly live show. Hanging out with me and Paul. Before we go, though, of course, we have a musical guest. Our musical guest is the artist Bowman. Bowman is the project of Stephen Bowman, an artist based out of Nashville, Tennessee. The song is called Maple, and it is about the ghost that lived in Stephen's late grandmother's house on Maple Street in Lexington, Tennessee. For years, she and other relatives experienced things moving around in the house, heard footsteps, and even saw a small boy watching them sleep at night. And when Stephen was a child, the house terrified him, and he heard those footsteps too. So the song is an ode to his grandmother, the story inspired by the real life terror he experienced as a child. And he, he's quick to point out that though the house did burn down a few years back, he did not do it. Just, just to be clear. Gotcha, Stephen. Wink. <laughs> so again, the song is Maple. The artist is Bowman. You can find Stephen on Instagram as Stephen A. Bowman. And we will include links in the show notes to where you can find Bowman on both Spotify and Apple Music. All right, my friend, where can everyone find you online? You can find me at, uh, at Paul Bestall on Instagram and, and Twitter and also Mysteries and Monsters across all social media platforms and podcast networks. Lovely. I'm Largely the Truth on Twitter, Instagram, and Blue Sky. And you can find my show Weird Together, co-hosted with Joseph Camo of The Cardinal Rule, everywhere. Find podcasts, live, or linked in the show notes. All right. Well, we will see you next week for episode 165. But until then, we will leave you with Bowman and Mabel. Had my eyes I cannot see The shadow that we do not speak of Goodness knows you won't believe it The truth is always darker than it seems I dare not climb that crooked staircase That's the angles where it hides Step and step, beckon by a silhouette. Help me, Lord, hear my prayer, heal my mind. Let the embers glow, let the ashes all be scattered.
heal my ears from what I've heard You told me it would be alright But I heard footsteps in the night I don't know if I believe my own I don't care if you feel the same For the best, for the worst We're gonna watch this story burn Till all that's left of the shadow is the flame Let the embers glow Let the ashes all be scattered Okay, let's get this cavity filled. Uh, doctor, I think your tank is leaking laughing gas. Gas? <laughs> Did you hear you can save on gas at BJ's Wholesale Club? <laughs> Wait, you can save on gas at BJ's? <laughs> yeah, members save on every day low gas prices. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> nope, these savings are no joke. <laughs> BJ's, absurdly simple savings. Shop today. Not a member? Go to BJ's.com slash simple savings. The it's always the right time deal. Hey, want to go to Mickey D's for lunch? Ooh, let's go now. <laughs> but it's not lunchtime yet. If we're going to McDonald's, it's always the right time. Yeah, it's hard to argue with that. There's a deal for every lunch hour at McDonald's. Now's the time to get two for three ninety nine. Mix and match a four piece McNuggets, a McDouble, a McChicken, or a hot and spicy McChicken. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer. Single item at regular price.